Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme Latent Energy. So Zilkatort playing white, he played the English opening, and after e6, he didn't play for Fincetto, instead he played e3. And it seems as though white had played the opening quite passively now. After b6, he just played bishop e2. So bishop b7, castles, and d5. So has black equalised? We're about to find out. After d4, black plays bishop d6. So it seems to be quite a harmonious position here. And white seems to have quite a passive position. But uh, white now develops his bishop quite aggressively by fin chattering it to, on b2. So after knight c3 castles, white now played b3. And it's this bishop which later becomes the hero of the game, believe it or not. Because once it reaches the b2 square on the next move, this diagonal later will become a major theme for the whole game, for the winning combination. So let's look out for that bishop. After knight bd7, bishop b2, queen e7. So here, white took time out now to play knight b5 and snatch black's two bishops. So knight b5, and black seemingly didn't mind, um, otherwise he wouldn't have played queen e7, he just played now knight e4. Perhaps he thought he'd get some dynamic pressure after, the, after knight takes d6. So on the C file. So after C takes D6, he does actually have later some dynamic pressure and even invades on the C2 square, as we'll see. So white plays knight D2 and black defends that knight on E4. And now white slightly weakens his position by playing F3. But one of the points of F3 is that if, bla if white can later get in an E4, then white's position might become alive. And this is actually what happened later. After knight takes d2, queen takes d2. There's some latent pressure here in the white position. White does have the two bishops, and especially this bishop, if it ever became active on this diagonal, especially as black has no dark squared bishop, this would be quite dangerous. Here, black played d takes c4, and after bishop takes c4, played d5. After bishop d3, though, there is now an emerging plan of white playing rook e1 and e4, which was increase the scope of the white pieces. After rook fc8, black is following his plan as well though, just the double rooks and potentially invade on the c2 square if white's not careful. White played rook ae1 and black countered with this doubling of rooks plan, so trying to get the rook on the 7th rank if white ever loses control of that c2 square. White played e4, so black continued with rook ac8. Now after e5, it seems that this bishop will never have a bright future because now there's two pawns blocking it on that diagonal. After knight e8 though, f4, black played g6. So potentially with g6 the, the dark squares are, are further weakened here. So how does white get in for an attack? White plays now a very aggressive move, rook e3. Potentially there's a pawn sacrifice coming, f5 and rook h3 with ideas maybe of queen h6. So black tried to parry this now, and perhaps this is the first major mistake. Black played f6, and it ended up actually weakening the king position, even more than if he hadn't. White took on f6, and after knight takes f6, maybe black was surprised at this, because now the threat of knight e4, which is reinforced by this d5 pawn and the bishop, will mean that white potentially has to give up this light squared bishop. And in doing so, that c2 square is going to become more critical critical for black playing rook c2. White, however, carried on with his attack. He now played f5. So because of this pin on e6, this is perfectly um, good here. Except for the fact that knight e4 seems quite dangerous positioning. So black's coming into the 7th rank if white's not careful. White played now bishop takes e4. And in doing so, he must have made a very careful note of the unblocking of the d-pawn. And I, I mentioned earlier this bishop would be dangerous on this diagonal. So we're about to see how dangerous. After d takes e4, white now is threatened by black by playing black's threatening rook c2. White took on g6 though, allowing rook c2. Now let's see, if the queen had just moved out of the way, then white's actually losing the bishop. So, it, so what does white do here in this position? Well, white maybe had this all worked out. First, he took on h7, 
And now if queen takes h7, then rook g3 is very dangerous, followed by d5 check. So black played king h8, white played d5 check here, and seemingly black had an adequate defence. Black played e5. Now I'll give you five seconds to see if you can spot white's next move, starting from now. In this position, white played the spectacular move, queen b4, trying to decoy that black queen away from the defence of the e5 pawn. Now let's see, if black had taken on b4, then actually it's a mate in 7, believe it or not. Bishop takes e5 check, king takes h7, and these two rooks with the bishop combine very well now for this mating net. Rook h3, king g6, rook f6 check, king g5, rook g3 check, and now king h5 is a mate in 4, king h4 is a mate in 2 with rook h6 check, and let's see, king h5, there will be rook f5 check, and now if king h6, bishop f4 check, and the two rooks are mowing down the black king here. So this is an incredible idea, this queen b4, let's go back to this position now. Black in the game played rook 8 to c5. And here we have another spectacular move played by white. I'll let you see if you can guess it. I'll give you another 5 seconds starting from now. White played another spectacular decoy of that black queen away from that e5 pawn. White played rook f8 check. Now let's have a look this time. If queen takes f8, bishop takes e5 check. And now if king takes h7, the queen can take on e4, king h6, and now it's a mate in 4, rook h3 check, king g5, rook g3, king h5, queen g4 mating, king h6, and queen g6, for example, is mate in 1. So that's another spectacular rook uh, sacrifice this time, with rook f8. Black took on h7, and now white played queen takes e4 check. And after king g7, actually Zukertort missed the most clinical kill here. According to Ribka, rook g8 is the most clinical kill. Because after king takes, queen g6, and now if queen g7, queen e8. Because now the rook comes in with the size of effect to g3. And this is mating the black king quite quickly. So, in the game actually... If we go back to this position, Zukertort actually played bishop takes e5 check, offering the rook on f8, so king takes f8 was played, but he's still completely winning because now bishop g7 check. And now this is also a beautiful move because if queen takes g7, there will be queen e8 mate. So black is losing the queen, played king g8, and after queen takes e7, that's it, he had enough, he didn't want to play out his checks. If rook c1, king f2, rook 8 c2 check, and here, either rook e2 or king g3 is winning. So, let's have a look in overview and summary of this quite spectacular game. So c4 was played, and white seemed to have a humble looking position at the opening, with the bishop quite passive here on e2, but it's what he did with the other bishop, which was amazing. He simply fianchettoed it, and later, this diagonal proved to be incredibly decisive. So queen e7, white grabbed that dark squared bishop, giving black some counterplay on the c-file though, because black was able to get rid of the c-pawn, so having c-file pressure. So in this position, after knight d2, knight f6, it seems as though black might be equal. After f3 takes on d2, takes, black played d takes c4 now, even dissolving the double pawns and still reinforcing that e4 square, as well as being able to double rooks. So white let black double the rooks, and even let the knight come back to the e4 square, giving up this light squared bishop, as we'll see. Because after rook e3, f5 was played. So white didn't mind giving up that light squared bishop, because he noted this unblockage of this powerful bishop now, with d5 being a very dangerous possibility. 
And now after fg giving black rook c2, but in this particular position, white had assessed it correctly, and after g takes h7, king h8, d5 check, black missed this spectacular queen decoy with queen b4. And after rook h c5, there was another spectacular decoy with rook f8. So here, queen e4, king g7, Although rook g8 was missed, this was also a brilliant winning continuation. Bishop takes e5 check, just giving up the rook on f8. So after king takes f8, bishop g7, king g8, queen takes e7, that was it. Blackburn had had enough. So this game shows the power of the latent power of this bishop on b2. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.